So anyway, this, this society, uh, one of its founders was Ed Pearl, and Ed Pearl uh, was the uh, preeminent scientist at, at the time, in the 70s, he remained a preeminent scientist in lots of different areas, mostly related to pain and nociception throughout his entire career. Uh, he was productive up until uh, the year that he died, still publishing papers, so he was actively working in his lab into his 90s, which is amazing. He contributed an enormous amount to this, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the work that he did. The question here uh, is, though, how does the sensory system encode information? And there were uh, two competing theories uh, at the time that this area of work was really developing. Those were uh, the intensity theory and the specificity theory. So the intensity theory basically posited that all of the sensory neurons that innervate your body, okay, uh, all are capable of encoding any type of stimulus, be it mechanical, thermal, whatever, right? But that the signal that they send to the nervous system uh, is uh, finally decoded by the brain based on the intensity of the signal, right? So if you're just sitting in your chair and nothing's really bothering you, uh, and you know somebody tickles you with a feather, uh, those uh, your neurons would fire a couple of action potentials. Whereas if you're sitting in the chair and somebody hits you with a hammer, uh, those neurons would fire action potentials intensely, and all of them would basically respond the same way. And the decoding that would happen in the brain would be based on the number of action potentials, basically the incoming signal, right? So the opposing concept related to this was that it's not about intensity at all, but rather about specificity. So what, what does that mean? That, that means that you should have neurons that respond specifically to light touch. You should have neurons that respond maybe specifically to temperature or te changes in temperature, heating or cooling. Uh, you should have neurons that respond uh, uh, specifically to peritogens, so things that cause itch, like histamine, etc., which we'll talk about somewhat in this class. And also, neurons that respond to uh, uh, pain stimuli, which uh, before we knew that they were nociceptors, they were theoretically <coughs> called nociceptors. But it was really uh, in the 60s and 70s, the work of Ed Pearl that, uh, that figured this out. So he tested this by doing uh, electrophysiology uh, in uh, animals and in human skin, actually, uh, looking at uh, whether or not uh, neurons responded to specific types of stimuli um, or just showed different intensities depending on the stimuli. And this, this is from one of his papers uh, that he published in uh, the 1960s. So this was in 1967. This was when he was still at the University of uh, Utah. And uh, what this demonstrates is that uh, if you stimulate the skin with different intensities, you actually see that there's a, a set of neurons that respond uh, to one type of stimuli, and there's another set of neurons that responds to the other type of stimuli. So in A here, they're probing the skin with just a blunt probe, okay? So like you take the end of your pencil, not the sharp end of your pencil, and you just touch yourself uh, on your hand, right? That's basically what they're doing here. And you can see that this particular neuron that they're recording from doesn't respond, okay? So this neuron does not respond to low threshold stimulation. Here, what they're doing is they're pinching the skin, right? So it's got a, they have a serrated forceps, and they're pinching the skin. So that's painful, right? This, it's not extremely painful, but it's painful. If you did this to the person sitting next to you, uh, they wouldn't be happy with you, and I don't encourage you to do it. Uh, so here you can see that if they pinch the skin, that this uh, neuron responds, okay? So it only responds to high threshold stimuli. So that's actually how we, we classify these neurons now. We classify uh, the low threshold uh, neurons, which we usually refer to now as A beta fibers, as uh, the ones that are responsible for the detection of light touch. And then the C and A, A delta fibers are high threshold uh, receptors, and they respond to intense mechanical stimulation, painful mechanical stimulation, and uh, temperature, okay? It turns out that these neurons actually are uh, biochemically quite different. Uh, they're also quite different in terms of other things, like their myelination status, et cetera, okay? Which we'll uh, talk about uh, a lot today. 
They also differ in the way that they innervate the skin. So we now know that uh, C fibers, for instance, largely just form free endings uh, in, in the skin. They come almost all the way out to the surface of your skin, whereas A beta fibers mostly are innervating structures like misner, corpuscles, etc., within uh, the deeper layers of the skin. Uh, again, we now know that this uh, so-called labeled line is the way that this works. It's not intensity-based. And we know that we have lots of specialized uh, sensory receptors that respond to different kinds of stimuli.